What's up MMA fans? It's Tudor Leonte from Sherdog here and today I'm with UFC middleweight contender Jack the Joker Hermanson. Hello Jack and welcome back on Sherdog. How are you? Hello, hello. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for your time and I'm doing uh, pretty well. Um, I'm, he I'm uh, hearing uh, you're on vacation uh, right now, is that correct? No, now I'm back in uh, in Oslo. So I just came back. Uh, so I've been I've been in a uh, vacation in Sweden and then some uh, quarantine hotel, and uh, now I'm back in in Oslo. Um, how was your vacation, sir? It was good. It was good. I was uh, just down for a week in Sweden and uh, did some fishing. So I enjoyed that. Um, how how did it went? Uh, sorry, how did it go? It did go very well. I was very happy with the catch and uh, had, a, had a great time. So, uh, yeah. And now I'm starting to get back into my normal routines again with training and so on. But, uh, yeah, I had a great time in, in Sweden. Oh, that, that's nice to, to hear that. Uh, are, are you a football fan? No, uh, I can't say that I am, but... Uh, you know, it's it's exciting you know, when Sweden plays, of course, in the World Cup uh, and so on. But uh, uh, yeah, normally I don't follow football, you know. But uh, sometimes when it's the World Cup, I, I watch. And have you been watching the European Cup so so far? I was supposed to do it yesterday, but then I actually was invited to a podcast, so I did a podcast and I missed, missed the match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also wanted to, to ask you, which national team uh, are you cheering for, Denmark or, or Sweden? But you already told me Sweden, right? Sweden, yeah, you know, when it comes to, to, uh, uh, to, to football or uh, any major sport, you know, that's, that's what I was... Uh, uh, cheering for when I grew up, you know, so you, you can't change, change that, right? So when you were watching, you know, Sweden play when he was a kid, you know, in the football, ice hockey or, or whatever it is, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, had, you know, I lived in Norway for, for some time now. And uh, if Norway is against uh, another team, that's all right. You know, I will cheer for Norway. But, uh, uh, you know, when, when it comes to sports, I, I usually cheer for, for Sweden. <laughs> Um, I saw that Sweden uh, has did pretty good, you know, against uh, uh, Spain uh, yesterday, and uh, hopefully they, they will manage to, you know, to get to move on to the playoffs. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope so too. Listen, let's talk a little bit about MMA. Uh, you recently defeated Edmund Shabazia at UFC Vegas 27, and um, by a decision after uh, outclassing your opponent. Um, did you expect the fight to to go like this? Yeah, kind of. The thing was that I, I was planning to start uh, with a higher tempo and start a little bit harder in the first round. But uh, since I had COVID, I was a little bit, you know, afraid to use all of my energy uh, because I was uh, pretty tired in, in, in the trainings, uh, you know, when I was trying to feel out after, after the COVID. So uh, I want to be a little bit careful with that. And uh, that uh, didn't go well, you know, the first round, I, I lost the first round. But then I knew, you know, I had to switch uh, things up and just uh, go forward and get into the clinch and, uh, yeah, work my craft. And I was able to turn the fight around and, uh, yeah, get the win. Uh, like you said, you, you got COVID, you know, before the, the fight. And actually, the, the fight had, uh, had to be rescheduled to, for a different date. Um, how... I mean, what were you feeling? How was, how were you during you know uh, the time when you you caught uh, COVID nineteen? Yeah, uh, it was like a flu. You know, your ache in your body, headache, uh, a little bit of coughing, fever, and uh, basically you're just in your bed the whole day, and you just go up if you eating something you know but when you eat you don't uh, you couldn't uh, taste it and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah so, so um, it was not good you know it, it was a bad time it was not like I was a, uh, I wasn't dying or anything like that but uh, definitely was very very sick and um, 
And the thing was that even after the fever went away and stuff like that, you still was very, very exhausted. You were so, so tired. And that was uh, the hardest thing to get rid of uh, before the fight because, uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, even uh, four days before the fight, my coach told me, Jack, I don't want you to take this fight because he, we trained a little bit and he saw how tired I was, you know, and uh, he was just like, no, this is not good. Uh, but I told him, you know, I, uh, I've been in the United States for 44, for 40 days now, so I, I'm not going to leave without the fight, you know, I, I'm going to do this. And fortunately, uh, I did it and I managed to, to win the fight. So I've been in similar situations before. It was a fight uh, many years back. I had the flu for a couple of weeks. And then right before I was traveling, like a couple of days before the fight, I got the food poisoning also. So, you know, I was destroyed getting into that fight. But, but I, I managed to win that fight uh, as well. So I knew that, uh, you know, I, I have that. I can dig deep, you know, if I, if I need to. Uh, I, I have the, the what it takes to to push uh, through through things like that, you know. So I knew that uh, I, I was thinking, man, I'm gonna go get into this fight and feel like shit. And if I don't, that's just a bonus. Uh, we heard different, uh, I mean, uh, different uh, reports, you know, different things about the COVID-19 situation. Uh, some of the fighters. Uh, quote the lighter version of it, let's put it like this. Some others yeah. like Alexander Volkanovsky and Hamza Chinaev seem to have suffered a little bit more. Uh, did you feel that your cardio has been uh, affected, you know, by, by it? Yeah, a hundred percent. I believe it has, but uh, it's hard because I, I, I definitely was affected uh, uh, during the fight, uh, definitely. But also after the fight, you know, uh, then you travel, you get all the jet lag and you don't train and you're exhausted from, you know, the mental thing from the fight. So when you start to train again, you feel like you're in very bad shape, you know, and I still feel like that. So I'm not sure if it is the COVID now or if it's just, you know, all the other stuff uh, going on. But uh, uh, I'm I'm not in great shape right now, but I'm working on it. So uh, I will be back soon, you know, in in good shape again. Um, we all hope so, sir. Uh, even though you, you spent most of, of the time on top of your opponent, uh, there were a few seconds at the end of the second round yeah. where he swept you and hit you with uh, a few shots. Um, talk us a little bit through uh, about that that moment. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I think that was uh, when I was going for Mount, I believe. He kind of timed it very well and dug under with his arm and uh, ended up on, uh, on top, you know, and he was coming down with some heavy punches as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I, it was not very good, you know, usually... I have better precision than that, and uh, that that's one of the mistakes that definitely shouldn't happen in a, in a fight like that. So uh, I was not happy with that. But uh, and you know, after the fight, I was kind of yeah, how did it go in that second round? You know, because it's very easy when you watch a fight and you see somebody finish strong in a round, right? That's what you remember. Just like, oh man, he, he finished strong in that round, but. I watched the fight again, and uh, the rest of the round is is me controlling the fight and and hitting him. So uh, I definitely feel like I won that round as well. Yeah, yeah, I believe there were no doubts about it, given that most of the time you were in in control of the, the situation. Um, yeah. you, your your victory was also important, since you were coming off a loss to Marvin Vettori in December 2020. Uh, what do you recall from from that fight? Yeah, that was also one of those fights with adversity, you know. Uh, like this fight, I came in with COVID. In that fight, he hits me with a very good punch in the first round. And uh, I, I, I break my eye socket. So I, I got the facial fracture. And what happened is, is that my eye moves. So I kind of see, you know, three Mar Marvin Vittori for the whole fight. So my vision was so, you know, in, in that fight, I, I, right now, I, I can't even believe that I made it through that fight because I couldn't see. Uh, it was like, you know, severe, twisted double vision. 
where Marvin, you know, um, yeah, uh, I was impossible to to focus in, in, at all. So that's why I just stood in front of him and tried to throw hands and throw heavy haymakers. And, you know, all of my game plan went out of the window because I, I just knew that I, I can't see the guy. I have to, I have to just punch whatever, you know. And uh, so I was super affected by, by that, but managed to, you know, fight through the fight. Uh, and also I'm, I'm, uh, I'm breaking my, my toe in the second or third round as well. So yeah, it was not, not the perfect fight for me either, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you got to give Marvin uh, credit because he actually caught me with that heavy punch in the first round that created that damage, you know. So uh, if I didn't was, if I wasn't caught by that, it, it wouldn't have happened. So... Uh, but that's the fight game, you know, so uh, definitely not my night uh, either. So uh, I would love to run it back with Marvin. I think I can perform better than I did that night. Well, like I said, you bounced back from that defeat uh, with your uh, victory over Edmund Shabazian. And in the meantime, uh, uh, Vettori has uh, went on to fight for the divisional title against uh, Israel Adesanya. Have you watched the, the fight between uh, Desanya and uh, Ambettori? And if so, I would like you know to to hear your opinion uh, on it. Yeah, yeah, I watched the fight, and uh, it was kind of uh, you know uh, expected. Marvin is super, super tough, and he takes a punch like nobody. You know, uh, if he gets punched, he just continues forward. He keeps his pressure. Uh, you know, Adesanya was kicking his legs, and uh, and he just. He kept on coming, kept on pressuring. Uh, but Adesanya was just a little bit, you know, too technical. He had a reach on him and Marvin couldn't really get to him. Uh, but he did manage to get him down like uh, one time. Uh, wasn't able to capitalize on it. Adesanya got up again. And then he had like three failed attempts or something where he actually got him all the way to the cage. He connected his hand under his butt, but he wasn't able to take him down. And I think that... You know, he, he tried the same takedown that he did on, uh, uh, um, um, what's his name, Trailblazer, uh, uh, Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland, yeah. Kevin Holland, yes. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and that worked very well in that fight. And he tried the same takedown on Sanya and he actually failed several times. So I think he would have, should have switched to another type of takedown and he maybe would have got him in down, you know. So that's what was, uh, was a mistake by Marvin. And, uh, yeah, besides that, I think Arsania controlled the fight and, and, and looked very good. And uh, um, yeah, definitely won uh, all of the rounds. Um, in your opinion, given that Adesanya is the um, reigning uh, middleweight champion, uh, ha have you seen uh, someone, I mean, that someone who could be a, a danger? For the uh, for for the champion right now, given that he looked like to 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 defeat and to 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 smash all of his opponents in the middleweight division so far. Yeah, I think it's myself. It's you know, <laughs> uh, uh, it's not very humble, but that, that's what I believe because I do believe that I present the best top game in this division. Uh, I really think so, and uh, even though I'm not the best striker, you know, I feel like. I'm, I might just need one chance, you know. If I just get him down, uh, I think he's going to be in deep, deep trouble. And I think I bring something there that uh, he's going to have a really hard time to handle. So uh, with that in consideration, I, I do believe that I'm the biggest threat. And actually, a guy that nobody probably thinks about, about is Chris Weidman. I believe that Chris Weidman can beat Adesanya as well because he also, he has even better wrestling than me. And uh, also are very, very good uh, grappling and top game. So I think myself and uh, Chris Weidman are, are the two biggest uh, threats to Arizona. Well, you have uh, a hell of a top control, uh, top, ground, uh, top ground game uh, indeed, sir. And uh, uh, those uh, ground and pound shots, uh, I, I, I've seen you fighting since uh, the Venator days. And then oh, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, those were some, some nasty shots in, in ground the power. Um, last topic I'd like to, to do, discuss with you before letting you go. Uh, what's next uh, for you right now? Uh, do you have already a name in mind? And uh, do you have already, I don't know, a date uh, for your return uh, in the UFC cage? Uh, I don't have a date, but... Uh... 
I'm looking at the name, you know, ranked above me. Paulo Costa doesn't have a fight. He's a guy that I would love to fight. And uh, then you have the Calvin Gastelum and Canonier. I fought both guys, you know, but if Canonier wins, uh, I'll, I'm open for a rematch there. And uh, then you also have the uh, Till and Bronson fight. So the winner of Darren Till and Derek Bronson, that could also be a possible opponent for me. And more or less, I believe uh, it should be it should happen in the uh, autumn uh, in winter, right? Yeah, exactly. Late later this year, definitely. If it is not, you know, Paulo Costa, that, that not, might change things up, you know. Uh, but but uh, probably I'm going to be fighting uh, later this year. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Do you have any last messages? Uh, thank you, everybody, for following me and sharing on me. I appreciate it uh, uh, greatly. And thank you for, uh, for the interview. Sir, thank you very much for your time once again. Congratulations for your recent victory. And hopefully, I will hear again from you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Goodbye. You too. Bye-bye.